we got in class the equation for the magnetic field produced by a solenoid, which was B equals mu naught N I over L. Okay, we got that equation. And then in the last video, you got B equals mu naught I over 2 pi R. So now those were for magnetic field. Okay, so B is the magnetic field. But magnetic fields produce a magnetic force on moving charges. So this is about a current creating a magnetic field, a current creating magnetic field. Now we're going to talk about forces and actually the forces are, can be on a current. So there's all kinds of things going on here. So for force we have two main equations. Force equals QVB. So this is the force on the charge in a magnetic field that's moving. Okay. So the force equals the charge times the velocity times the magnetic field. And so this magnetic field is going to produce a force on this moving charge. Got it? Maybe I should write that down. So there we go. We have a force, F, produced by a magnetic field, B, on a moving velocity, charge, Q. Then the second one, our second equation, is the force on a wire carrying a current. So this part here is the force produced by a magnetic field on a charge on a current carrying wire. So the force is F, the current I, the magnetic field B, and the length of the wire L. Okay? So those are going to be our two main force equations. And we're going to use them in many different ways. And I'll probably solve a problem on a separate video for you. So the second right-hand rule has to do with this relationship between force, charge, and magnetic field. And actually, if you look at, if you look at this equation here, force equals IBL, what is I? I current is moving charge. Okay? So that is how fast the charge is moving and then you have that length factor. So this is your meters, this is your coulombs per second, this is coulombs and this is meters per second. So either way this comes out to coulombs meters per second. Coulombs seconds meters. Okay? So they're different forms, basically, of the same equation. So our second right-hand rule shows the, the relationship between the force, the magnetic field, and the velocity. And this is really kind of the best version of what, of the right-hand rule, because there's other ways of doing it, but this one I like the best. So we're mainly talking about the magnetic field. So that's going to be four of your fingers, okay? Because it's, it's like a large portion of your hand. So that's what we're talking about. That's how, this is how you can remember what's what. And these don't change like they changed on the first right-hand rule where one of them's the current and the other's the magnetic field and then it switches if you were dealing with the solenoid. So this is always true. So our magnetic field is mostly what we're talking about, so that's four fingers. Your thumb is a little thing, you're talking about the moving of this little charge, so 
it's just a little thing, and that's going to be your thumb, and these guys are going to be perpendicular to each other. So this is perpendicular to this. And all three of these things are perpendicular to each other. Then if you look at, if you think about what your palm does, think of it pushing. Okay, so your palm's pushing, that's why it's the force. And so all three of these are perpendicular to each other in a 3D plane. So your force is actually coming out of the page. So if you put your hand, like in the picture, put your fingers pointing to the left, your thumb pointing up, your palm should be facing you, and that means that your, your charge is going to be pushed towards you. Is that making sense? The charge is going to be pushed towards you. And if we were talking about current, okay, if we were talking about current, current is basically the flow of charge. So the current would be here. That would be like your velocity. And then force is like electric field, because remember your electric field is your force per coulomb. So this could be like your electric field. Um, this will still always be magnetic field. Okay, so this will always be B, and it's mainly what we're talking about. So. The electric field could be the force, the current could be the velocity. So that's another, you know, another way of looking at it and other things that could be used with our second right hand rule. Okay, so let's say we had this little particle that was in this magnetic field. Do you remember what the dots mean? The direction that the magnetic field would be going if you have dots? Okay, remember you're looking at an arrow. Oops, the fletching should go the other way. So you're looking at an arrow, and if you see dots, you're seeing the tip of the arrow. So that means that our electric, our magnetic field is coming out of the paper. Okay, so let's make our fingers point towards you because the magnetic field is your fingers, is your four fingers. Make your magnetic field point towards you. And then the velocity is your thumb. So our velocity, we said our particle was moving up. So we have our magnetic field pointing towards us, our fingers. Our thumb should be pointing towards the top of our page right now. And which direction is your palm pointing? right your palm is pointing to the right so our force on our particle is to the right okay now that's going to make that's going to make our particle do an interesting little thing our particle is then going to turn towards the right and now if we apply our right hand rule again and have your fingers come out and your thumb point in the direction of its velocity, of the direction your particle is going, now you see that your palm is kind of pointing diagonally down. So now your palm's pointing down diagonally this way. And so now it's pushing it down that way. And so now our particle is moving this way. And if we apply our right hand rule again, fingers towards you, thumb to the right because that's the direction our particle is going now our force is pushing down and can you kind of see what's happening to our particle it's starting to make a circle and this is actually one of the things that they do in accelerators particle accelerators is they accelerate the particle sideways or they make the particle move sideways by applying a magnetic field to it and the actual velocity of the particle isn't changing. It's just changing directions. So it's not really changing the speed of our particle, but it is changing its directions. And this force, remember circular motion? That force is a centripetal force because see how it's always pointing towards that center? 
always pointing towards the center. So it is a centripetal force. So we could be using our old equation from way back when, FC equals MV squared over R. So this may come back. So watch out for it. I'm not saying it, it will, but it could. It very easily could. Now, what happens if our particle is a negative particle instead of a positive particle? Okay, because remember, Ben Franklin messed up, defined everything in terms of what happens to a positive point charge. All of these experiments that we're talking about now, all these force on a moving wire, all these solenoids and everything else, all of these were discovered before we found out, hey, there's protons, neutrons, and electrons, and the, the protons are actually in the nucleus of the atom, and it's the electrons that move. So everything that we're talking about now was discovered before then. So everything is based on what happens to this positive charge. So what happens then if instead of it being a positively charged particle, it's a negatively charged particle? Okay, what do you think happens? Basically, you just flip the direction of your force. It's going to be the opposite direction. So an electron in this magnetic field, instead of making a, this is a clockwise circle, this one's going clockwise, instead of making a clockwise circle, would make a counterclockwise circle instead of a clockwise one. And if the field was magnetic field was going into the page, you could see how that would change the direction of your circle also. So you ha kind of have to practice with that. You know, what if the field's going into the page? What's that going to do to the particle? If it's positive, what's that going to do to the particle? If it's negative, what if the particle is going out of the page? What's it going to do a positive? What's it going to do to a negative? So those are the little things that you want to kind of keep track of. But we are going to deal with our, in the math portion, we're going to deal with our equations from the previous page. So our equations are the force equals QVB. It doesn't matter if it's a big Q or a little Q. I know before we've made it a big Q but it can be a little q. And force equals I B L. Now notice I wrote the I, when I made my I, I actually made it with the bars on the top and the bottom because I have I and L in the same equation. And then I made my L a script L, just so you could see it's not L. I mean, that could be, that could be an L or an I. So this is definitely an I, this is definitely an L. That's the only reason I wrote it that way, to make it easier to see what I'm talking about. So that will do it for now, and then we will do a few practice problems and try to suss out this right-hand rule. So we're going to do this in class. We'll do a lot of this in class. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.